What is up, everyone? Welcome to Unscripted Access, episode 176. I am your host, John Macluso, here with Anthony Ta. Hi. I almost, hey. said, I almost said good morning, but it might not be entirely accurate for some We'll people. do the, the good morning, the good day, the good, good day. evening, good night. I'll do good day. Good day. <laughs> and we are without the Bromelian Milan today. Yeah, he had a sudden last minute life thing come up. So it's it's just us two beautiful people. I'm sure some bad, terrible pun or joke will sneak its way in out of one of our mouths somehow. And that is exactly what we'll meet after it. Silence. Just silence. Yep. <laughs> and then we will recollect and then go back to what we were talking about. Yep. So, how are you doing today, Anthony? I'm tired. I hear you. But I will be enthusiastic for this podcast. <laughs> we both will. <laughs> yes. And there, there is a reason to be enthusiastic, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about it a little bit before the podcast. We talked about it last week. Not as much. Rest assured, ladies and gentlemen, there will be no spoilers. Oh, no, we can't do spoilers. No spoilers. No, we can't uh, do spoilers. But we're going to talk about Uncharted 4. Anthony, what did you think about it? We both beat it, so... It's more Uncharted, in a very, very good way. Uh, it's just, it's just hard for me to, to say like what. It's hard for me to describe this game, describe this game without saying it's Uncharted. Except now you rope around a lot and stealth around if you choose to, and um, it's very pretty. It's Uncharted, um, so naturally everything you step on will kill you. Will attempt to kill you. Mm -hmm. Um, um, the enemy always has a, I mean, it's like an uncharted, I wouldn't say it's a checklist, but it's that, it's that overabused word formula. It's the uncharted formula. The bad guys obviously have unlimited money and budget to send more bad guys after you. Everything you step on is going to collapse. Um, I almost, uh... I'll set down a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, shootings Uncharted. The stealth thing is pretty interesting. Uh, you could choose to go either way you want. For me, I just went in guns blazing because I just, like, I don't... I, I've played enough Metal Gear. I'm done stealthing around. <laughs> yeah. I was the same way. <laughs> Not to mention you have far less tech to avoid getting detected. Yeah. Um, yeah, I actually don't have much to say other than it's a really, really good game. It's Uncharted, and it's really hard to put down. I finished it in like three or four days, playing like two or three hours at a time mm. because it was, it, it's really good. And um, so why do we need new graphics cards again? We'll just make Naughty Dog make everything. They can't. Everybody use Naughty Dog's graphics engine. <laughs> no, it's not just that. They, they have like witchcraft programming yeah. <laughs> uh, i can't think of any other way because it's just like you think like other studios are trying to do what naughty dog are doing which is if you throw enough money at it it will become the best thing ever because naughty dog has to have like one of the highest development budgets out of all studios mm -hmm. at sony and they put out the greatest thing ever which probably led some, led some other studios to think that if you dump enough money into it it'll be great and become the greatest thing ever which isn't really the case yeah, it is, it was definitely, it's the first game since the beginning of this console generation where I stopped to, stopped playing to take pictures, to take screenshots. Oh yeah, everyone's using the game <laughs> as a tourist attraction, they're all taking mm -hmm. photos and shoving around to Facebook. I didn't do the Facebook thing, but I took tons of pictures. No, Bronson loaded up Facebook with pictures of Uncharted, but he don't. He normally does that with other games. Yeah, what people also other what people also did was uh, they took the surprise uh, game within Uncharted and mm. then shoved it onto Facebook too. So I already knew it was coming. I did too. Still really nice though, but knew it was coming. It was pretty rad. Well, so. for me, like obviously, I have like no. I have never owned a PS1. I've never played a single game from the PS1 days. And I have, so basically I have no nostalgia or anything for PS1 days. So for me, it's like, you know, I'm not like geeking out when I saw it. Oh, great. I just said it's a PS1 game. <laughs> but, I, but, you know, it's like, oh, that's, that, that's really nice. That's really nice. It's, it, it was pretty rad. Um, 
So everyone uh, who hasn't played Uncharted, look forward to uh, a really cool little Easter egg. There are actually several Easter eggs in Uncharted 4. Um, really? Yeah, but that's the best one. Easily. Well, it's the most obvious one. Why? Well, I mean, yeah, it, like you're like it is the most blatantly obvious yeah. one. So look forward to that. Um, I think I think the game is one of the best games of all time, easily. And uh, I I I don't really agree with that um, because to me it's very very good without a doubt. Like it is extremely good. I wouldn't be surprised if you know everyone jumps on the boat and says it's the game of the year. I, I wouldn't be surprised, but to me, I just kind of have a hard time feeling that it's, that it's the best game ever because to me, it feels like it's more Uncharted. It's more Uncharted. Um, in a similar sense that, you know, you could say, like, Zelda Skyward Sword, I could, that is probably one of the best, one of the most perfect games I've ever played. I know people think I'm crazy when I say that. <laughs> it is the closest to perfection kind of game that I've ever played, and even then, it, it's kind of like, I wouldn't call this one of the best games of all time as far as significance, because it's more Zelda. Not bad thing, but you've kind of seen some of this stuff before. So, in Uncharted 4, it's more Uncharted, and it doesn't feel as surprising to me. You know, I mean, actually, believe it or not, from the... Uh, from E3, tr from the E3 visit, I know I was gonna get chased by a tank, giant armored vehicle. I know that everything he steps on is not safe. I know that everything he touches turns to shit. And it wasn't Uncharted Two. Uncharted Two was really surprising, and really, really awesome because that was the first time you're like, "Whoa, this is how mm -hmm. screwed up things could be." And Uncharted Four, you already walked in knowing everything's gonna be screwed up anyways, because Uncharted Two and Three set that precedent for you. So, you know, I already expected that stuff. So, um, that's why I don't think it's one of the greatest games. As far as from, like, fewest amount of flaws, yeah, I can't really, I can't really point out anything that's wrong with that game, if I'm really honest. Um, I think I had one frame rate problem. I, I, like... There was only two. I only counted two, but, you know, like... Mm. They were relatively minor, and they only lasted like a second or yeah. two. It wasn't like we rendered this beautiful scene and, oh, goodbye frame rate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that didn't happen at all. It was just very, it was very rare. And uh, the multiplayer, well, I can't find much wrong either. I mean, it basically took the Uncharted concept and made a multiplayer out of it that's mm. really entertaining. So, I like, as far as games with the fewest amount of faults, I'd say it's... Um, yeah, sure. I can I can understand how it's one of the most flawless games, if that if that makes any sense. But you know, I actually think I would. I think The Last of Us is. Oh no! Don't I would get me say, wrong. I would say The Last of Us is higher, way higher. No, than I I agree. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but I I think that I honestly think that Uncharted Four is the best game to come out since The Last of Us. Coincidentally, since uh, Naughty Dog's last game. <laughs> when did The Last of Us come out? 2012? 2013? 14? What? It's 2016 now, right? Yeah, yeah. 2016. 20... Something. I'm just going to type this as it's the computer. I think 20... Anyway. Yeah, 2013 sounds about right. Yeah, three years ago. Okay. <laughs> E3 week, or the week after E3. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Uh... So, I, would I you just, would you recommend that uh, any listener who hasn't played it plays it oh yeah yeah totally like like i said this is like as far as game as far as flawless games go like as games as really hard for me to find any single thing to complain about uh yeah i mean people need like you should play it like it's like it's it's like they don't they didn't make it like some hot, some dangerous adventure all the time they actually stopped to give you breath Mm -hmm. Before setting you down the next uh, death trap. Yeah. Also, Nathan Drake's journal is very entertaining. Can I say that? I love his journal. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's like one of his stuff is like, so, you know, you're going through an old ruin. So, naturally, there's some pretty darn gross stuff. And, you know, when he pulls a lever, he basically, one of my favorite ones, he just sounds like what pulling that lever felt like. And he yeah. had a picture of a wet <laughs> cat, a lion's tongue. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, he... And, 
when you're skating cliffs, one of my uh, one of my other favorite ones, he he basically sketches out the cliff and he points in all areas of the cliff and he just wrote death trap. Because <laughs> because yeah. it's uncharted, the cliff's gonna fall. It's gonna fail on you, guaranteed, guaranteed. Well, anyway, um, we both enjoyed it. Um, it's a great game, so play it. Yeah, it's more uncharted. I've been saying that like. I know I said that like 10 times, but that basically is it. So mm-hmm. if you are a fan of Uncharted or you like it, this game will meet all your expectations. Definitely. No questions asked. Yeah. Um, uh, kind of glad to make my PS4 feel a bit more worth it now, because at this point it's just been all multi-plats and drive club. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, finally, something to you know make me question why the hell do they need to put out PlayStation 4 Neo? Why? Like, why, why, why do they need to do that? But, uh, yeah, that's Uncharted 4. Yeah. Great game. Play it. Gorgeous game. Oh, man. Lo- I love the views of that. I mean, I, I, did, yeah. I, I didn't go full tourist mode and stop to <laughs> take a picture like a lot of people do, mm-hmm. but but um, pretty darn fantastic. Yeah. Well, all right, let's get to news. News. It's um, We've got... It's been a little bit slower of a week, but we do have news, uh, so I'll toss it over to Anthony. Yeah, so there are... Uh, it's a collector's edition of Final Fantasy XV. They're going to make more of it. And so the number that they're going to make more is 10000 And that's it. That's it. That $270 actually decent valued collector's edition. I mean, I know it's $270, but people actually have drawn up charts where if you actually itemize all the pieces that went into there, it actually does add up to around close to 270 so it's like a bundle, actually. Mm-hmm. I actually would call it more of a bundle because if you're actually able to purchase each of those items separately um, outside the collector's edition, then that's more of a bundle to me than you know something exclusive. But anyways, the anyways they're going to make 10,000 more of them, and then that's where they're going to draw the line. That's but hey, check out the movie and the uh, and the animated series and whatever else. I'm sure maybe a comic is along the way. Like, let's hype up the game before it even yeah. comes out. It's like, why are you guys doing all this when Final Fantasy 15 hasn't even had the game isn't even out yet? You're trying. There's like really no legacy quite yet. But you know, here's here's the movie. Here, here's this. Um. Well, I, I, I can appreciate the fact that they actually gave us a solid number of how many they have. Unlike a certain other company who will not be named. Um, it is a collector's edition. They're not meant to be, you know, at least they're making it. At least they're making it collectible. Yeah. Unlike a lot of collector's editions where they print it out to a point where it's not even collectible, so they lose value anyways until like 10 mm-hmm. years after, then they finally... You know, jack up in value. Like the Skyrim one was a good one, in my opinion, because uh, they put out the collector's edition. And I thought everyone was gonna go eat it up because, well, it's Skyrim. The Skyrim craze was really heavy at the time, but I, I walked around like maybe two or three months later, and I still see like PC and PS4 collector's editions just sitting around. I mean, gr- sorry, yeah, PS3. Of course, I could understand why, because the PS3 version ran like crap, and yeah. <laughs> uh, they patched it like five or eight times, and it still ran kind of crummy, just less crummy and less crash prone. Mm-hmm. But I was surprised the PC one didn't just sell out because, well, you know, it's PC. It's your, it's your modding sandbox. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's what I almost think of Skyrim on PC. Just yeah, because it's like so Skyrim on PC and all of, and people keep saying mods, 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 mods. It's like so you have no other re- so there's like is that your o- only big reason to play Skyrim on PC's mods? So it's just your modding sandbox where you can do crazy shit like put throw the Mass Effect Normandy crashed onto um, Tamriel and you know what I've I've noticed about mods, um, the big games, it's Bethesda games and Grand Theft Auto where the huge modding games, you just mod 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 mod. That's all you ever hear when you talk about those games on PC. Well, that's because once you eventually run out of things to do, which that the developers give you, which does happen. I mean, like Skyrim content at this point, they're done a while ago. They 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 made they made Fallout Four. Um, so what do you do to keep playing? Mods. Yeah. <laughs> Mod it out. Uh, and, you know, and 
it's kind of really interesting because it's like there's so many mods that I think the game changes to a point where it's not really the original game anymore. Because you're talking about like texture packs, mm -hmm. um, Ice Crown Citadel, you could throw World of Warcraft stuff in there, <laughs> you could throw Game of Thrones stuff in there, Lord of the Rings stuff in there, and it just, it just gets to the point where it's kind of like this giant sandbox of whacked up crazy adventures that you throw in. <laughs> yeah. I probably should mod Skyrim because I freaking have Skyrim on Steam actually. I I haven't uh I've been I was planning on rebuying the legendary edition on uh on a Steam sale, but I, I just haven't. The allure of indies has me in its grasp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh Undertale, Stardew Valley, Firewatch, um there was another one. Uh Yotun. Indies are evil. In the all of the best ways, I'm I'm starting to fall prey. Uh, I think of what Bronson has been preaching for years. <laughs> yeah, I need to get my backlog cleared up a bit before I can consider that stuff. Yeah, that's part of my backlog. <laughs> well, anyway. Yeah. Um, you know what else is in my backlog? That's been in my backlog, and I probably am not going to take it out of my backlog because I'm not a big fan of it. Destiny. I I'm, I was done with Destiny after three months after its release. Mm -hmm. I like I was just like, in the moment everyone on the staff was finished playing with the first Destiny, I stopped and never looked back. Once in a while, I would just put the disc in, just out of curiosity to just walk around for two seconds and then take the disc back out again. Uh, and, and that's about it. Apparently, even on the base Destiny game, you can... Um, go to one of the new social gathering areas, I think, because they gave it to me, but I didn't want to walk there because here I was level, what, 23? <laughs> and everyone else is... I don't know what the level cap is yeah. anymore in that game. Probably 40. I'll just, I'll just say 40 or 50. So, you know, I wasn't going to do that. And the shooting is amazing, but I just don't... I mean, with the game where you queue up with other people and has, like, MMO-like elements, I just don't have... I just don't... I mean, I don't have anyone to play that game with, so I just yeah, I, I just don't have the stuff. motivation. I hope they do what <laughs> I hope they do what Blizzard does, which is eventually when enough expansion comes out, the older expansions become part of the base game, so I don't have to buy it. For example, uh, World of Warcraft Legion expansion is coming out this year. So what mm -hmm. they did was they took the previous expansion, uh, Warlords of Draenor, and put it part of the base game. So I can now go play that if oh, I that's wanted to. Rad. That actually yeah. is really cool. Yeah, it's it's nice because that means I don't have to purchase like five expansions to catch up with everyone yeah. else because I stopped playing at Miss Up and Dairy. But original uh, purchasers still get something out of it, out of buying it in the first place, right? I don't think so. Other than he has the head start and everyone else. The thing is, is that in games like this. Well, yeah, you, you, like, by paying, you get the head start on everyone else. I mean, like, World of Legends came out, like, a year or two ago. So you got a two-year head start on the guy that just got as part of the base game. Yeah, that's so, fair. So, and it was a $40 expansion, so I don't, so it's hard to say that you've been ripped off or anything like yeah. that. Yeah, so, okay. But, yeah, Destiny, I don't care about it anymore. I don't either, but we know that you fine people might, so... You, well, I, I want to say you heard it here first, but you probably haven't, especially if you're a Destiny fan. But uh, there's a new expansion coming out, thanks to, and we know this thanks to a leak. It's called uh, Rise of Iron. Very creative. It looks, the, it, it's, so the marketing team apparently had a slip up. <laughs> is, yeah, is, is, is what was I'm it taken thinking. by an, uh, there was a picture taken, it looks like. Was it taken by an employee? Um... It probably I don't know. Say. I don't know. Leaks can happen in any it, way. It just po it popped it up on be, Reddit. It could be. It could be a text message that was sent through the air and intercepted by somebody. For all we know. Yeah, that's true. Like could be for all that. we know, because it, it it was a camera picture taken, but but uh, <sighs> does the picture look a little Skyrim esque to you with the yes, snow and absolutely. the and the wolves and the. I, I will never understand the need for melee weapons like that when you have these big ass guns. Oh, 
well, don't you like, well, wouldn't you like it if an antique beat people's guns up? That would be great. <laughs> I guess that's kind of the point. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, there's some. It's like Rise of Iron. Um, yeah, there, it looks kind of fantasy-ish, in a Skyrim, yeah, Northrend kind of sense, because in Fantasyland they always have to put that cold region where the Nordic people, mm-hmm. like you know, like take some Finland, Sweden, Norway stuff and yeah, throw it in there because make fan- it look really be- epic because because fantasy. <laughs> Well, apparently this. And that's uh, it. That's that. That's it. Just a picture. Apparently, uh, this um, this DLC is supposed to come with a new raid that's centered around the Fallen, and it's larger than both of the Year One DLCs. Th- that's not the Taken King. It's the other ones. Uh huh. I don't know what the other ones are. I don't remember. Well, I have it right here. I have a case right here. First game ever on my PS4. Um. The Dark Below and House of Wolves. Oh, that's right. So, um, Destiny players get to look forward so to that. buy an expansion pass. And, you uh, open up the game case, and that's the first sheet of paper right Anthony there. Anthony and I get look, get to look forward to not getting it, so... Not giving a <laughs> shit? <laughs> I put enough that, money into Destiny, and uh, I, I don't even play it. I bought a PlayStation 4 because of Destiny. Okay, well, I bought a PlayStation 4 because of Destiny and the fact that everyone else on the staff wouldn't... Keep quiet about telling me to go buy Destiny. <laughs> I buy a freaking PlayStation 4 bundle for Destiny because it's going to be the greatest thing ever. It's made by Bungie. What wrong could they do? Oh. Yeah, I had some buyer's remorse after that. Hopefully Uncharted has made you feel a little bit better about that. Oh, yeah. Well, at, th- <laughs> well, at this point, I've had my PS4 long enough that I'm just like, well, yeah, it's my game system. Like, you know, I don't love the thing, but you know, I don't hate it either. It's, it's a game system. The Wii U actually does invoke more emotion, more love hate because you know. I think for me that that's my Nintendo. Xbox. Nintendo. Because I my Xbox is only my Halo box. That's it. My Xbox is in a box. <laughs> yeah. And it's the Forza one too. It's the Forza 10th anniversary one. It's the too. blue one, right? Yeah, it's the. I love the Super color. Pretty. I love the color scheme on that one. As far as console paint jobs go, that's probably one of my most favorite that I've owned so far, but that's not really saying much because all the stuff I own is just regular colors, but I think they did a very good job with that Forza one. I love the shade of blue on it. Um, Speaking of Nintendo, that actually did remind me of something. So the company president says that the NX will not be a successor Mm. to the Wii U or the 3DS, which continues that whole, I have no idea what this thing is going to be. What what is it? Is it is it an Nvidia Shield? It's gonna it, it's it's gonna be a Nintendo TV. Oh God! <laughs> you know, now that you mentioned that, I'm just like that actually does. You're sound, all of a sudden you're like, uh-oh. <laughs> uh oh. Um, maybe it's a streaming service. And that would. would- I, I don't know. Maybe I'd be if, okay if with it that. is if it is a streaming right. service. You never have to buy a Nintendo game console ever again. You just keep using that streaming service. Yeah. It just happens to be a little box <laughs> called NX. I mean, that could happen, but that kind of saves you the trouble of having to buy Nintendo systems, right? But then do you have to pay a fee to access their servers? Because the cloud gaming, when you're talking about like uh, what's it called, PlayStation Now. Mm-hmm. And on live, you actually have to pay a subscription service in order to use cloud gaming. No, nope, I guess we'll find out. It's not a successor to the Wii U or 3DS. Okay, I guess we'll great. find out not at E3. <laughs> not at E3, because the only thing they want to show you at E3 is Zelda. Which, from a demo perspective, I think makes sense. Because the Nintendo booth is always freaking crowded. And when you're talking about something as big as Zelda, everyone's going to line up for that. Mm. Um, from a news perspective, to everyone who's not at E3... Um, Highly disappointing. Because what else do they have? Uh, I mean, they'll have. They might have a little bit of Pokemon. Uh, obviously, not playable. I think this is. Um, I think this is the first time, first year that I've ever like enjoyed Nintendo stuff where I find myself just sighing a lot every time I hear the name Nintendo. Nintendo. Because it's like Zelda's your only thing for the rest of your all bets are on that game being the best ever. And if it doesn't on unchop- top Uncharted 4 and it's sold out constantly and you don't print enough copies, we're all done. Well, it's not even coming out this year, right? 
I'm pretty sure they they recently deleted the, uh, Zelda. I have no idea. Let us, let's double check for you guys. The problem is, is that this Legend of Zelda Wii U game doesn't even have a um, official title. It's just the Wii U Zelda game. Or 2017, according to the wiki. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Because it was supposed to come out. They were saying it would come out this year, and then I, I thought they recently just delayed it. Hey, it was announced in E3 2014. You remember that picture? Yes. Yes, That was I a do. very... That is a very... That trailer cool. was pretty rad, actually. It's a very pretty picture. Yeah. See that mountain over there? You can walk to it. <laughs> <laughs> because most games haven't done that before, no, right? No, <laughs> never. Not at all. Oblivion. Um, <laughs> Ten years ago. Um... Where were we? So we... Oh! It's coming out to Nintendo. the Wii. Yeah, oh. Okay. Nintendo's coming this out to the Wii and the NX, right? The uh, Wii U. Well, let me check the source on this one, because you know how the internet works. You actually yeah. have to check the source on stuff. It's from Polygon. Uh, well... <laughs> All right, it's from their Twitter. The new Legend of Zelda will be focused on E3 or 6. It will be launched simultaneously on two systems. So you probably never needed a Wii U if you wanted nope. to play Zelda. They're doing this unless, you want, to, unless you want to play a couple of GameCube remakes. Which are good, good remakes. Um, fantastic remakes, by mm -hmm. the way. Like Twilight Princess in 1080p, it's like, oh, it's so pretty, if a bit awkward. Wind Waker's definitely pretty. Oh, yeah. Wind, <laughs> I, mean, uh, I mean, like it's just like really strange how they've just... The GameCube Zeldas were extremely on complete opposite ends mm -hmm. of the artistic spectrum, and yet share a similar game engine underneath. Yeah, that's that. That is insane. When you told me that, I was like, "What?" Well, <laughs> it is modified, but well, yeah, but yeah, but if you, like it's weird because I played Twilight Princess and then I go back to Wind Waker and I'm like, "Oh, I could see some elements here that totally suggest to me that they share a common." graphics engine or game mm. engine underneath uh i actually watched video about 107 facts about twilight princess and twilight princess in its very very early conception days was originally a vision to be the wind waker 2 but then they decided to go with the realistic style so that's kind of how it got its roots yeah. traced back to a wind we waker. will thank uh peter jackson and lord of the rings for that yeah <laughs> and the fact that every that and the fact that nintendo fans some Fans were not happy with Wind Waker after you make something like Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Mm -hmm. I mean, Wind Waker is great. It's very charming. I like Wind Waker a I lot. I mean, like, as far as charm goes, Wind Waker is really hard to top. A lot of charm. I don't have any problem with dark style. It's just not my kind of art style. Mm hmm which, you know, obviously because I come from, I'm like on the Twilight Princess band camp where I'm yeah. just like, fantasy. <laughs> Hell yeah, fantasy. <laughs> Oh, it's great though. Well, I have right, to let's... say though, as far as those two games go, they have art styles that were implemented extremely well. It's hard to find other games that have their art put into a game as well as those two. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's move on here. Um, we just talked about Destiny. Always segue to Nintendo somehow. Uh, oh, this is absolutely Anthony Todd's territory. So I'll go ahead and let you. Okay, so Gran Turismo Sport uh, is coming out uh, this November, November uh, November 15th for Japan and North America, and the 18th for the UK, specifically the UK, not the rest of Europe, but the <laughs> United Kingdom, because they like cars. I'm not joking, when I played Forza Motorsport 2, uh, surprising number of guys from the UK back in those days. But anyways, Forza Motorsport... Uh, uh, Forza Motorsport. Gran Turismo Sport. Um, it's not a full tr Gran Turismo. It's not a Gran Turismo 7. Um, it's basically... it's it's It focuses on motorsport. So all those really fast prototype race cars blazing around the track at like 180 miles an hour going around a corner. At defying the laws of physics kind of stuff. That's going to happen. It's going to have like 130-something cars. So it's not a fully fleshed out. It's a spin-off of title. And they're going to put a lot of emphasis on um, racing esports. So this actually does ha exist because uh, Project Cars does a similar thing. 
a concept at least where you can go online and you could literally do endurance races like 18 or 24 hour endurance races on project cars so uh i don't i've never done it so i don't know how the system works but you know you can like swap your controller or control your car off to someone else and they take a car while you take a nap um but yeah you could you could do that because and i can understand like the appeal of that because to do a similar thing in real life is astronomically expensive racing isn't cheap just even taking your regular car on your driveway out racing, you're probably going to bust your engine. You could bust your transmission. You're clearly going to need a new set of tires at the end of the day just going around corners at high speed. So so driving fast in real life is extremely expensive, so you have to get alternative. I don't know if I want to get it, though. I know it's a racing game, but I like driving road cars at high speeds mm-hmm. in a game. I don't like driving prototype race cars because i don't know it's just the speed the speed is too much for me to handle if, if that makes any sense because with a road car like for me there's just something really appealing by taking like you know an average regular car and going around corners and chucking it around because mm-hmm. that like that's that's about as close to real life as you're gonna get whereas yeah. a prototype race car just seems so fast for me that i'm just like oh this is what's like to be a race car driver going 200 miles an hour oh i'm going 200 miles an hour oh i'm doing this exact same thing that every other racing game on this planet does that's also why i don't really find driving lamborghinis or ferraris too appealing because every single racing game that has licenses to those manufacturers. Every single racing game that features Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Porsches, or whatever, all do the same thing where you can take the world's most desirable cars and go 200 miles in them. Great. So that that guy, that guy, that guy, and that guy. What else do you have? That's why I like driving San Francisco so much. You could do something as stupid as take a taxi and try not run the police in it. <laughs> 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 Stuff like that to me is fun because every other game on this planet has a Ferrari. Like every other game with Ferraris, great. You've you've got Ferrari. All right. What makes driving your Ferrari different from that guy's Ferrari? Oh, it's scarier. Okay. What else? And yet, you know, in Project Cars, I freaking love taking like a regular hatchback and throwing it around, driving around the coast of France. That's what. But. Um, 137 super premium cars. Super premium. So you remember that premium standard bullshit in Gran Turismo 5 and 6? Super premium. <laughs> to say that they're upgraded to PS4 standards and not... I mean, granted, oh, the, car, yeah. the cars in Gran Turismo 6 look really good, by the way. They looked really good, but, you know, bar has been raised because PS4 is that much more powerful, but... Uh, I don't think I'll get it. Motorsport's not my kind of thing. Well, I mean, like, motorsports with, like, prototype race cars and that kind of stuff. I would rather drive road cars. It's just a lot more fun that way when you, you know, take, like, a four-door family car and you just have a blast around in it. (laughs) There is a perk to Gran Turismo having weird tasting cars. You could take, like, a Dodge, um, Dodge Ram pickup truck and race it around in Gran Turismo 5 and 6. (laughs) Granted, it was the same model from the ps2 but it was still kind of fun you just take a pickup truck and just chuck it around because what game lets you do that i mean i think that's fun (laughs) just like you can't take a real pickup truck in real life and trash the hell out of it i mean well you could but you know in a video game just like oh i wonder how well this truck handles nope not good at all i'm off the road but i'm in a pickup truck because off-road is its thing right um i'll just wait for gran turismo 7 more like i I don't want to yeah, I'm going to pass on that one as well. Yeah. Um, we did talk about Grand Theft Auto V that people won't stop buying, right? No, but we just talked about how how it's a big modder community. There's a big modder community. I don't know how GTA. people keep buying this game because it's like, what do you do? Because I know a lot of people who bought Grand Theft Auto V likely bought it twice, at least. Because I bought it for the PS3 and then they redid it. So I bought it for the PS4, and then they came out with the PC version, which Nick bought. So he bought it three times. <laughs> which is, like, what did you have to do? Did you have to, like, buy an Xbox One version also so you can, like, play with your friends on Xbox One? And then you have a PS4 version to play with your PS4 friends, and then you have a PC version because modding, and then you have a 360 and PS3 <laughs> versions because of similar prop. Like, what did you, what, how do people keep buying this game? Because it's, it's, it's at 65 million now. Shipped. 
shipped. I don't know if that number includes any digital sales because the game gets put on Steam sales. So, and it's always a big seller during the Steam sales. Oh, yeah, like, definitely. Why do people keep buying it? Have you just bought it once? I bought it twice. I bought it twice as well. Yeah, so. PS3, PS4. Yep. Same here. And to be honest, yeah, the PS4 version is a lot better. Um, because, you, you, cause, well, you get more cards, you get more rendering, your frame rate isn't screwed up half the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because, yeah, I don't know how Rockstar got it to run on a PS3, but it's pretty darn remarkable that they did. I remember I saw the trailers for it the first time, and I was like, there is no way this game could run on a PS3. And it did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks way sharper than Grand Theft Auto 4 on the 360. Like, that's the thing. Grand Theft Auto 4, on, to be honest, in hindsight, the Grand Theft Auto 4 didn't look that good. Mm. It was all murky. It, 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 was, it was just a city on three different islands. And here it was, GTA 5 with San Andreas. And I'm just like, how do you fit all? How do you fit all that? Like, but they did. <laughs> Developers seem to be like that these days. Uh, maybe not quite as Naughty Dog, but pretty darn close as far as their programming mm-hmm. and graphics team goes. But there you go, sixty-five million shipped units. Pretty big number there. <laughs> Star Wars mods for Grand Theft. <sighs> Yeah, you it, it, you it, have to admit that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> We're looking at a picture of, Today an, on of UFO. an X-Wing <sighs> on uh, Grand Theft Auto. Well, there you go. Everyone buys it. <laughs> and it was not so successful. Uh, Microsoft's Project Spark. Do you remember Project Spark? Barely. <laughs> I remember it was just something they showed at E3 was a creative toolbox. Mm-hmm. That's all I really know. Uh, well, it's dead. So for those of you that we we just reminded you of its existence, it no longer exists. Yeah. Done. We all know how I feel about that stuff, about projects ending and companies closing and stuff like that, but... Man. We haven't heard from Project Spark in a really long time. What is Microsoft up to anymore? Halo. Besides, besides the... Oh well, yeah, we know they're working. Okay. <laughs> but, but but like, what are they up to other than they're killing off all their little small little projects, and all their big projects? Most of them are now going to PC. So Gears of War is looking more PC like because the Gears of War Ultimate Edition runs on PC and is in 4K. Mm-hmm. I actually downloaded the Forza Motorsport Apex beta for this laptop. And aside from the fact that the frame rate's really weird and has some graphical issues, uh, I can play it in 1080p on my laptop. No problem. I just plug in my Xbox One controller via USB and bam, it yeah. works. It works. So, pretty rad. Yeah, they're working on Halo, and which I which gears. I don't want to buy anymore. I'm sorry. After Halo Five, I'm done. I'm really mm-hmm. done. I mean, I like it. I, I like the multiplayer. It's a very, it's a respectable game, but that whole marketing spiel thing. Such a sham. What is it called? Find the truth. Yeah. Master Chief has gone missing, and you, Spartan Locke, will find the truth, hunt the truth, or something like that. And all it be, actually became was basically you and Locke becoming buddies' buddies, <laughs> while Cortana, who, by the way, is your search voice on Windows 10 and Windows Phone, has gone bonkers. Ridiculously disappointing. I'm just like, uh... I mean, it looks nice. <laughs> yeah. Like, the multiplayer is pretty much it now. The multiplayer is good. Uh, I just don't have anyone to play it with, so I gave up. Mm. Uh, apparently, I do a lot better in free-for-all than on teamwork, because at least in teams, because at least in free-for-all, you don't get a lot of messages telling you how you suck if you have that one bad <laughs> game. Like, I'm just like, I'm kind of glad to see that the Xbox community still hasn't really grown up mm. yet. Maybe a little bit, but yeah, not quite there yet, but... Yeah, Halo 5, I just... I'm done. I bought that game because I thought, oh, yeah, everyone's going to play and that kind of stuff would freaking... <sighs> to me, it's just another shooter. Like, a good shooter, but it's another shooter. Halo Reach is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> if only they would fix the frame rate crap on uh, 
on the backwards compatible version. Yeah, they keep adding games to the backwards compatible version, and I look at their list, and it just seems a little odd because they have some big games, and then some games you never really cared about. Yeah, Dust of Siege Three. I just remember playing a demo of that on the Xbox 360. I just don't remember much else. Yeah. Well, that's that. That, that Project Spark is dead. Sorry, Project Spark. Apparently it was on Xbox and I've Xbox. never even heard of Team Dakota before. It's probably the team that had, that had to deal with Project Spark. Well, yeah. Well, that's that, guys. Oh, that uh, was actually something that you paid for. That's actually all of our news today. A pretty solid amount for kind of a slow week. Um, but the good thing is, and you guys all know how excited we get about this, yes. we have comments. Yes! And we are going to reply to said comments. And not only that, but it just might include a guest comment by in. Bronson Fiore. Thanks for the comments, all... And you guys are currently listening to Anthony we replying to the to comments. On <laughs> next in the scripted access episode. So listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have typed that message in real time. Alright. <laughs> so you guys just heard us commenting back to you amazing commenters. But not only are we gonna do that, we are going to reply live. Right now, right at this moment, I am looking at Nicole Moon, and we're going to reply to your comment, and then everybody else's. So anyway, go ahead, Anthony. Okay, so the first <laughs> one is from Nicole Moon. My hubs, I'm guessing husband, keeps telling me to play Civilization since I love strategy games. I keep telling myself to play it as well. If I were to play a Civilization game for the first time, which would you guys recommend? It does seem really interesting, and some of it sounds... Amusingly frustrating talking about the different ones really makes me want to play one. Uh, I've only played Civ 5, but that was the first one I've played. Actually, it was pretty easy to get into. If you put the game in the lowest difficulty setting, nobody will bother you. <laughs> and also, they actually have different uh, levels of tutorials in Civ 5. So you could say, I am brand new to civilization and the game will give you like a step-by-step -step tutorial and stuff like what your unit should do what your mm -hmm. worker should do hey where should you build your city or if you're a kind of person like me who just wants to shut up all the um the tutorial messages you could say um i already know how to play civ but i am new to civ 5 or you could say i am i know civ 5 but i'm new to the brave new world expansion so, actually, I think the tutorial is actually pretty thorough, and you can actually set how much you want the tutorials to show you stuff. So, I think C5 is a good place to play. That's right. Yeah. Although, I do need to warn you that if you do start playing, you don't be surprised that it will be, like, six hours later. Yeah, I know. Because the, the first time I played the game, it was just the demo. Time I, flies. I played the demo, and I was in it for three hours <laughs> before I knew it. I'm like, shit, <laughs> I gotta buy this game. Mm -hmm. And when I bought it, I couldn't stop building my tech. <laughs> And, and, again, on the easiest difficulty setting, all the other empires, they don't bother you very much. If anything, like, you could build your empire up really fast, and everyone else is still stuck in the Renaissance Age. So on the easiest difficulty setting, they won't really bother you at all. Like, very little. I mean, they're going to begrudgingly not like you, but... <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how it goes no matter what difficulty you Because play. the game is going to need to find some way to make you want to shut them up. <laughs> right? Yes, Civ 5 is definitely the best starting point. What I would suggest doing, when you get a chance, go to Steam, add it to your wish list. Steam will update you when it's on sale because it's always on sale. And it's always on a really good sale. And it's really cheap now. Yeah. Like, you can get the complete edition for, like, 15 bucks yeah. or something like that. Which is, I had Civ 5 regular, but then when the complete edition came out, I paid for it because it gets me Brave New World. It gets me a lot mm -hmm. of map packs, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so that's the way to go about it, in my opinion. Brave New World's um, kind of good. The expansion's kind of good. I yeah. feel like they could have... I felt like some of the features could have been like tuned up a little bit more, like the, you know, like the religion stuff, and that kind of stuff needed to be tuned up a little more. Yeah, there is a... It's really fun. I have to say that the whole religion thing in uh, Civ Five Brave New World is pretty fascinating, because you basically are getting into kind of like a... Um, how do I call it? It's not warfare, but it's like... an an aura fight 
if that makes sense. Kind of like Invisible Force kind of fight. Because you want your religion to shove into everyone else's cities. Oh, and their yeah, religion yeah. is trying to shove into your cities. So you're not really at warfare and you're all playing you know, nice democracy and like, hi, hey, let's make this trade deal. But really, your religion is like having this giant invisible fight to see who can, you know, brainwash all yeah, the other cities. An ideological like, battle. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's right. Ideological battle. I wouldn't say brainwash, but it's like that invisible force that just you're trying to I, get your <laughs> religion spread to every city. In, I got gotcha. you. And there is a religion. There is um, you can get a religious victory if you get if your religion gets declared the world religion. You win. You win the game. There's a religious victory now. In Brave New World, oh, that's yes, really right. because if huh. you if your religion gets voted world religion, you are you what you have completed a religious victory. Mm. Which I think is extremely hard because you're trying to convince a leader that your religion is the best and therefore you should vote. Well, in that case, you have... <laughs> it's you, really you hard. Much just... I think it's really difficult, actually, because I have a hard time with Did it, you so. get it? Have you gotten... No, I never got it. I usually win via scientific victory or blowing everyone else up. Yeah. Blowing um, everyone else up, obviously, is the easiest... Actually, even, like, even warfare is hard because... Yeah, because obviously when you take over our territory, that's more territory you have to defend from other people. Yeah. And it gets really tough with how much military you build. And then, of course, you need resources to maintain the military. So it becomes a giant and then headache. When you attack, you put them all in one spot. And then all of a sudden, everywhere else is not as defended. Yeah. So Well, it's really easy when you're only at war with you know, the country that's bordering you instead yeah. of, you know, the country that's on the other side of the sea and they're sending a bunch of ships after you. But I only play on easier difficulty settings, so... I actually, coincidentally, I won from a... Dem using, uh, or I won through a Democratic victory last night. Those are really hard for me. Because I keep to myself and everyone just keeps having a problem with it for <laughs> some reason. How dare you keep to yourself? I was like, how dare you keep to yourself? I'm going to denounce you. And I'm just like, fine, you want to keep throwing pebbles at me? Fine, I'll throw a boulder at you. <laughs> Have a nuke. <laughs> Have a nuke. <laughs> well, all right. Um, You're just like, man, it's just like, it, 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 it's like, it's like I build an extra, you know, giant giant death robot mm -hmm. and, they, and they have a problem with it. Like, why? <laughs> Uh, Bronson, uh, in uh, reply to uh, Nicole Moon, start with Civ Five. It is the most recent and easy to get into. Yes. And uh, just know Gandhi is a bastard. Yes. 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 <laughs> uh, people also up there with Gandhi. Bismarck is also an annoying pain. I although... feel like Queen Elizabeth can be a pain in the butt. Queen Elizabeth has been sort of okay for me. You just have yeah. to be a little. You just have to be a little careful. Um, Bismarck just likes to throw a fit all the time for some reason. <laughs> um, friendly people. Russia's friendly. Catherine of Russia? Yeah, yeah. Usually friendly. Um, There's that's, so many that, countries that, now. That's, that's all, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I can't name the leaders. Yeah. <laughs> I can't name the leaders of everything either. But the, the, the two most ones that usually throw a fit at me is usually Gandhi and Bismarck. George Washington is eh, kind of peaceful. Kind of. Fights with everyone else except me. <laughs> <laughs> which is fine which is good I guess when I have the liberty uh, social policy up it's a uh, huge perk <laughs> <laughs> it's really odd when you are like playing Russia and you choose liberty because <laughs> you know uh, yeah um, okay so the next comment is from Ethan so much cat hate the cat is cute Referring to the cat starter Pokemon. Mm -hmm. You know, the grumpy one that... <laughs> that was the one that is, with all due respect, not so cute. <laughs> but the owl is cuter, yes. It is adorable. Uh, I saw somewhere that most or all of the Pokemon on this one have been leaked. Don't know which charts, which start I would go with, but we'll probably get Moon. You know, I don't really care the anime, never have, but the games are really fun. Well, ye... I think I would just go with the owl one. I'm going with I, the owl, I, I, yeah. Like at this so point, cute. at this point, I don't care about specs or stats anymore. I just, I just pick whatever works for me. I just play the game to finish Elite Four and call it. I, I'm not into Pokemon anywhere near as much as I used to like ten years ago when yeah. I built a semi-competitive team. <laughs> <laughs> I went through the whole trouble of doing checking IVs, checking Pokemon Nature, hatching a bajillion hatching eggs to find out if the egg was undesirable. Got to start over. Um, IVs, um, EV, the stat, not the Pokemon, mm -hmm. uh, building move sets and, 
And uh, I have to say, I think I had an even record with that team against casual people. If I went to competitive, I would get nuked because everyone likes world dragons. Um, they don't care about the anime. I, yeah, I don't care about it either. I stopped caring like 15 years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like the, the first season, that was probably the very first anime I, I ever watched. But that was it. I forgot I when I stopped. Up. I think I stopped right when uh, the, when the uh, Game Boy Advance games came out. So like 2003. Mm-hmm. I gave up after that because you know the show started getting really. I f- either I grew up, or the show got dumber, or both. I grew up and the show got dumber <laughs> <laughs> because you know your tastes change when you reach adolescence yeah, and all yeah, that kind definitely. of stuff. So, but you know I still played the games. I still love the games. I bought a DS just for Diamond, but the TV show was just Team Rock's gonna try and steal Pikachu. They're gonna be blasting off again. And Ash, and they're going to have these dragged out Pokemon battles that it's just more of them standing there yelling at each other than than Pokemon, <laughs> than Pokemon Tournament. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you want a Pokemon battle, play Pokemon Tournament. Uh, do you have it? Did I you have it. it? I, How is it? I uh, I don't know yet because I just started tutorial and then oh. Uncharted 4 existed. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uncharted right. 4. Now, that's all you had to say. <laughs> yeah, Uncharted 4. That's what happened. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the next comment is from Crit. At one point, I wasn't so sure about Overwatch, but now I am hyped. Yeah, you know what? Over- I like Overwatch. The more Overwatch I played, the more I like it. I don't know if I want to pay forty bucks for it, but Bronson is so Bronson and Ray are so into it, they'll probably just buy it for me. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, I like it. I don't know if I want to pay 40 bucks for it, though. I guess it's just another one of those because it's a multiplayer game I need people to play with for it to even be worth mm-hmm. worth it to me. Um, I didn't get in any of the betas. I think it was a free beta. You could Yeah, download. the open beta yeah, was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but a friend did, and let me try it out. Awesome! Looking forward to this coming out. Yeah, Ooh. it's gonna be it's gonna be a great game. So we'll see. Uh, comes we'll out see very very soon as of the twentieth. Um, it comes out the day after you guys watch this episode. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I am stoked to see a Warcraft movie, but I agree that there's probably gonna be a lot of people expecting a WoW movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see. I feel like there's gonna be an unfair expectation. Even like memes are like getting this wrong it is a warcraft movie based on warcraft one two and three you know like those warcraft games the rts Mm -hmm. games way before world of warcraft but the problem is it's because everyone's idea of work oh i wouldn't say everyone's but a lot of people's warcraft is associated with world of warcraft because that was the game that 13 million people who paid monthly subscriptions at one point in its life world of warcraft but this is Warcraft. Actually, it's based on Warcraft 1, which is like 90s. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah, there's going to be, I feel like there will be an unfair expectation that there aren't, you know, oh, where are the Blood Elves? Well, they haven't been discovered yet. <laughs> where are the Night Elves? They haven't been discovered until Warcraft 3. <laughs> well... Where's the Lich King? Uh, you're speaking like Warcraft the movie 10 right there. <laughs> so, yeah. I, that helps me lower my expectations when it's like this is going to be a Warcraft movie, not a WoW movie. Because once you make it an MMO type, once you make a movie based on MMO, it gets really difficult because, well... Uh, is there even a movie based on an MMO? I don't know. Nothing I know of. That's it, probably... It's really hard because... Technically, if you wanted to literally match a game, you're talking about a team of about eight or twenty-four people, depending. Uh, taking down something the size that's bigger than most buildings, and somehow by throwing enough lines of magic at it and poking it <laughs> enough, it will eventually collapse, and you have saved the land. <laughs> um, if you wanted to make it really literal, uh, let's see. Unless they are diehard lore nerds, a lot of people may have no clue who some of the people are. Yeah, I don't know if people even know who Lothar is. I don't. Or know who Arthas was before he became the Lich King. I don't. Um, well, have you played World of Warcraft? No. Okay. <laughs> the, For you, it's that's okay. Why. Well, this is my point. Yeah. Or this is your point. Yeah, so, it's just like, you know, it's like, do you know uh, why the Horde and Alliance existed in the first place? Nope. Yeah, so... You know, so I, I am the casual World of Warcraft. I'm just a casual Blizzard fan. 
Yeah, Bronson's really into yeah, Blizzard. Yeah, it's funny because he's... He, you, he was I really into Blizzard for everything except StarCraft. Well, now he has Overwatch, which he is a big fan of. So. <laughs> play Overwatch now! Yeah. The thing is, is that if I play Overwatch, I'm just going to spend most of my time being a support, which is actually a good thing because Bronson and Ray noticed that most people don't want to play support, so one of them had to. Mm-hmm. Out of necessity more than because they wanted to. Because, you know, it actually has one of those things where you kind of need a well-made team to, you know, stand a chance. And support's kind of nice because they can help you get more damage and heal you. Heal you is nice. Healing is nice. You know, better than dying and having to It's a lot better than dying, And waiting 20 seconds before your next spawn point. Okay, so, um, Pokemon was my first anime. Loved it as a kid, not gonna lie. Still watch it sometimes now. (laughs) The games are fun as hell, though. Not sure if I'll be playing Sun or Moon yet when it comes out, though. Yeah, when you're little, that Pokemon show was awesome. Yeah, I agree. Um, although, I am so psyched for this new Pokemon game. Just because... I, I hate that... Sometimes, I, you know, I love and I hate how much Nintendo does remakes. That that Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire remake, I totally really like unnecessary. It. it was necessary, because it <sighs> was my favorite generation, okay? <laughs> that being said, though, I only played it to, again to the Elite Four and then just stopped. I'm just excited for, like, a new Pokemon. I like new they, Pokemon. They remake games on 10-year anniversary, so Ruby Sapphire was next in line because... All right, I mean... Because they did it, they did it for the 10th year anniversary for, you know, for, uh, red and blue and green. So they did fire fire red and leaf green. 10 years. Makes sense. It's for Game Boy Advance. And they did it for uh, silver and gold, heart gold and soul silver. And, well... These are next in line. All right. Oh, that's fair. Fine. What's next? You got me. Well, what's after Game Boy Advance games? Pokemon Diamond. Oh, God. <laughs> I spent a lot of time on that game. That was the first time they, those games went online, and yeah, forums crashed. <laughs> <laughs> because everyone was signing up to battle each other online because you know, the Nintendo Network didn't exist yet. Because, you know, it was a DS. It didn't have, yeah. It didn't have much power going behind it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's 10 year anniversary. Uh, which means they're going to make a Diamond next, which I hope they make it on a system that's more powerful than a 3DS, because that's kind of a little bit of a weak jump. Because when you went from Game Boy to Game Boy Advance, that's a huge jump. When you went from Game Boy Color to DS, oh, that's a colossal jump. DS to 3DS, eh. But yeah, I liked the anime when I was little, uh, right up until... Sapphire, Ruby, then mm-hmm. I stopped. I th- yeah, I think that's where I stopped. Uh, let's see. That's it. I almost read my own comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, Anthony Tull says, thanks for the comments. So we will respond to them on the next Unscripted X episode, so listen in, which is this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there, I read my own comment. Thank you for the comments, listeners. Keep them up, guys. You, you keep uh, posting, we'll keep responding. Never ending cycle of love. <laughs> well, yeah. is there anything you wanted to say, sir? Yes. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on twitch.tv slash thegameraccess. If you'd like to donate, we have a donation button under the video player on our Twitch. Check our other shows. 60 Minute Access this coming week is, um, I think it's Battleborn. I think it is Battleborn. Mm-hmm. Um, the game that people keep comparing to Overwatch, even though they're very different, they are very different. I guess it's the art style. Just yeah, sticks. that's, that's the, the art, only the art, thing. I the think the DreamWorks animations, Pixar art style sticks out. Um, check out Super Mario Bros. and Go Playtime, where they where the guy who has never finished a Zelda game, <laughs> the intern, is going through the original Ocarina of Time Water Dungeon right now. Wow, man, that sounds <laughs> awful. That poor I, guy. <laughs> yeah, I know. That I, being no, he he has Bronson. Bronson's there with a guide to make sure the suffering doesn't nice. kill, doesn't kill everyone in the room. I'm lucky enough to love that game and have played it so much that I have the dungeon memorized. Freaking, I played the 3DS version, and they actually put paths and signs next to the switches to tell you where the water level is gonna be. <laughs> yeah, and I and, and even then I still didn't like it. <laughs> Man, uh, playing God this past week was. Uh, was uh, P- uh, Poplio, the water starter from Sun and Moon that mm. needs more love because people just don't want to care about that seal. <laughs> Man. Um, Bronson's Soapbox is on new game development. Uh, basically, he's comparing about how Persona 5 is 
uh, you know, doing the trailer route, building a cool game, that kind of stuff. And Final Fantasy XV, which is going to be, we're going to throw out a movie, animation series. Yep. We're going to throw out all this merchandising stuff out before the game even comes out. You know, the two different ways of approaching, you know, hyping up a game, that kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah, and it's been over 10 years since Versus was announced. Shit. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, there comes a point when something's in development for so long, there's no way it could get better. Yeah. It just, it just can't, because you're talking about a PS3 game that now has to be remade as a Cough, PS4. cough, Duke Nukem. Remade as a PS4. Yeah, that that would <laughs> that's really bad. Um, making jokes against games that are far superior to your own. <laughs> uh, let's see, what other shows do we have? Uh, I think that's it. Gamecast. Oh, yeah, Unscripted like, Access. No, yeah, d- yes, <laughs> which is this one. <laughs> um, and that's our show lineup. Yay! All right, guys, well... He covered the social media spiel and the uh, selfless or selfish self promotion for the site. Shameless. And, uh, shameless. That works. Shameless self promotion. That's it, guys. So we will see you next week. So have a good week, and uh, we'll see you then. Peace, all.